there's uh, much controversy about who got to the North Pole first. Uh, uh, history books, normative history books, uh, tell us, taught me anyway when I was in school, that uh, Admiral Perry uh, is the man who, quote, discovered the North Pole. Is that accurate? Well, Admiral Perry uh, led the American expeditions to the North Pole for many years. He took several people with him, including a man named Cook, whom he took on his first attempt to reach the Pole. Later, Cook took his own expedition, and according to real authorities, and particularly the Inuit people, uh, he never got within 400 miles of the North Pole, but went over to a side of Ellesmere Island in Canada, where he camped for the winter with two Eskimos, and when they returned, he claimed to have reached the North Pole. It was said then of Cook that he was the discoverer at that time of the North Pole. Now, everyone excluded the Inuit Eskimos as, quote, credible witness. In those days, you had to be a white person to be a credible witness. And this is all documented. This is not my uh, suggestion. And in fact, the Eskimos were overlooked. But when they were questioned by a man who was part uh, Inuit himself and part Scandinavian, uh, Dr. Rasmussen, uh, he said he knew at once it was a scandal because the Eskimos said that they don't know where Cook traveled to because they didn't know where the North Pole was. But wherever they were, they could still see mountains in the background. And there are no mountains from for 475 or so statute miles uh, from, from the North Pole. Now, Perry, on the other hand, traveled with something like 24 men, 130 dog teams, um, at least 24 sledges, and he traveled with individuals trying in a relay team to reach the top of the earth. And you must remember there was great significance. At that time, it was believed that there was military significance in reaching the North Pole. It was a tantamount to reaching the moon in our time because no one knew what was at the top of the earth. So this was quite significant to society. The British were trying to reach the North Pole. The Italians were trying to be the first. There were, there were people from Norway, Denmark. Everyone wanted to be the first nation to stand at the top of the earth. Well, as they got closer to the pole, it's quite well stated that Matthew Henson was with Perry leading the way. And Perry told his men, and this has been documented by other members of the team, he said, Henson must go with me. I cannot make it without him. Matthew Henson took the lead and reached the North Pole, we believe, 45 minutes ahead of uh, Admiral Perry. This has been documented in an interview that Henson did in 1910. When Perry reached the area that they had determined to be the North Pole, Perry was very upset with Henson. Basically, why didn't you follow my orders? Now, many people speculate that Henson simply uh, went ahead because he didn't know exactly where to stop. I don't think that's the case. I think Matthew Henson decided that I've been with you for 18 years on this trip. I've been your colored associate or assistant, and in this instance, it is my time, and I'm going to get there first and stand there. And I think he took his own rules and traveled to the pole. When Perry got there, and they put the flag in the ground. Matthew Henson said, on this day, a son of Ethiopia, a son of Europe, and sons of Asia have stood at the top of the earth. So he was very multicultural in this perspective. So it's a matter of choice. Do you want to give the North Pole to Perry? Naturally, when Perry came back, all of the whites said that Perry was a discoverer, or there was a controversy with Cook. But black Americans here in New York celebrated. Even Adam Clayton Powell Sr., uh, W.B. Du Bois and others, the two races were like planets, sort of revolving about each other, but not interacting. And they celebrated Matthew Henson as the discoverer of the North.